Of course. How's everything in your world? Everything, everything's good, man. Everything's good. Um, <clears throat> just trying to keep busy during this crazy time. It feels like we're living in a horror movie right now, but yeah, I was just saying that this doesn't <laughs> feel real. No, it doesn't. Have you been doing? I saw you did some YouTube stuff. Uh, have you been doing Instagram Live on uh, on your end at all? I've done a few Instagram Live where you know I go on mine and chat, but I haven't done it with a guest. Actually, I've never done it with a guest. This is my first ever time. Wow, doing it with somebody. So thank you. No, of course. I uh, I did one with uh, Tyler Breeze a few nights ago. Nice. So that oh, was pretty cool. Love yeah, he was. I, I love the interview that you did with him and Ty Dillinger. That was a really good spot. Well, thank you. It was good until they um, slapped the crap out of my chest. No, I know. And I was about to say, this might, this is going to be kind of different for you now, because you're usually the one asking the questions, right? Yeah, I'm not usually, uh, you know, used to being on this side of things. But it's cool, man. And I, it's just amazing that you were even aware of my videos. So I appreciate you reaching out about this. Dude, man, you've been, you, you have killer videos. I think and it was funny, because I was actually talking to a friend of mine. First of all, that comment on Twitter actually killed me. When someone said that we're, <laughs> we're also colliding, that actually killed me. Yeah. I'm also, I'm also a really big Seinfeld fan, too. So, like, it's a little bit of a Seinfeld reference, too. Like, we're also colliding. So I, like, I actually laughed. But um, recently, I watched a few of your interviews that I really, really liked. And it kind of gave me some questions I wanted to kind of ask you in regards Please. to them. Um, so the, the episode you did with, you know, Chris Benoit's son was uh I, I obviously like you could tell the way you're kind of that's like it's 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 heavy duty stuff you're talking about you know sure, what i mean yeah, yeah. did you obviously have to prepare a lot different for that interview than other interviews or did you kind of just go in like i never did in the office and just get the questions prepared yeah no i knew that i knew that there was a lot riding on that interview and it was a really sensitive topic that david benoit had never talked about in 13 years by the way hello to everyone who's commenting here this is great that we're doing this, this yeah is awesome. absolutely uh, so David Benoit and I had been following each other on Instagram for a while, and he sent me a message and said, hey, man, if you'd ever want to do an interview, let me know. And I'm like, well, sure, like, let me know where and when, and we'll make it happen. And he said, well, I'm going to be in Vegas in January. I said, great, I'll go there as well, and we'll make it happen. And what you don't see in the interview is I flew in on a Thursday night to do the interview on a Friday, and we actually hung out all Thursday night, me and David and his friends. So we went out and got drinks. We went and got dinner. And that kind of broke the ice. So that, you know, it was during uh, us having a drink that he basically said, look, man, whatever you want to ask me, you can ask me. That, that's, that's crazy. And you, and, and you definitely asked questions that got him talking. And you know what? It was funny because it was like he, you guys were very like, uh, like on, on par with each other. Like he kind of knew like what you were going to kind of ask next type thing. Like he was prepared in that interview. Well, I think the thing is, is he had a lot of stuff he wanted to get off his chest. Yeah. So it was, you know, it was cool to, to be able to, for me, hear the answers. And for him, I think, to just finally get it out there and, you know, go from there. So for people that don't know your channel, you focus a lot on interviewing, you know, professional wrestlers. And on my show, Popternative, I do interview wrestlers, but I don't just interview wrestlers. Yeah. You just kind of focus more on wrestlers. Or lately, you've been doing kind of people in the wrestling world. Yeah. But before that, I believe, like, you've interviewed, pe like, people, like, outside the wrestling world as well, right? Oh, yeah. So, like, my job for the last 15 years since I graduated from college is I've been an entertainment reporter. So exactly. I've traveled the world. I've interviewed everybody. And it's been the most incredible job that I'm so grateful to be able to do. But I've interviewed everybody from Tom Cruise, Sandra Bullock, Oprah, you know, Gerard Butler, Will Smith, you know, on and on and on. And I was uploading a lot of those to my YouTube channel. But then when I uploaded wrestling interviews, the movie fans would be like, who's this wrestler person? And then when I would upload movie interviews, the wrestling fans would be like, come on, man, when's the next wrestling interview? So the great thing about the internet, and I think the most important thing about the internet is doubling down in your niche and doubling down on what you're great at. So I don't think it made sense for me to be dabbling in both worlds. So I still do interview celebrities but they just don't get put up on my uh, YouTube channel. No, for sure. I, so I do a lot of, a lot of my first kind of quote unquote, kind of like, like popularity kind of fame of my interviews was a lot of like my hockey guys. Right. Cause sure. you know, I'm in Ottawa and like I, I've been involved with hockey for, for many years right now. So having those hockey interviews are, are pretty fun, but 
I just love like interviewing pro wrestlers just because like the stories you get from them are amazing. Yeah. And I think it's kind of because they travel all the time, right? That's why they kind of have the best stories. I I agree. And I also love that like there's such a distinction in wrestling, unlike in any other form of entertainment, where like the character and the person are very much melded together to be one. Like, you know, people still call Tyler Breeze Breeze or Breezy, and that's his character name. Like, could you imagine calling Tom Hanks Forrest Gump? You know, it's, yeah. just, it's, it's so wild how that is. So I think that it's the two worlds that kind of mesh together. They're, you're right, they're on the road like 300 days a year. So there's a ton of stories there as well. But they're also just open books, you know? And I think that most wrestlers were fans at one point. Well, I find it really funny too, where, you know, it's it's a very, that industry is a very like, so you've interviewed a lot of people, you know, the quote unquote, like I kind of, I tried to stay away from the like the wrestling shoots when I had certain people on, you know what I mean? Yeah. But naturally yeah. they just kind of bring up stuff where they're bashing someone and I kind of try to like not go there type thing, you know what I oh, mean? Oh man, yeah, no, I hear you because especially in the wrestling world, thank you to everyone who's commenting down here. Thanks for hanging out with us while we're, all stuck in quarantine here. This is crazy. There's a lot of action going on here. Yeah, this is great. So what's up, everyone? Um, I, I think that there's so much negativity in the wrestling world. So if if I can just be even just a tiny little bit of positivity and look at the good things that are happening in it rather than harping on all the terrible things that are happening in it, I think that that's just good in general. And I think it's one of those things where, like, opportunity and, you know, finances and money walks and the BS kind of walks type thing a lot of times. Because I'll give you an example. I interviewed, you know, Matt Riddle before he signed with NXT. And on my interview, he said that he didn't want to go to NXT or didn't want to go to WWE. Like, he actually, like, wrote, like said it. You know wow. what I mean? And look where he is now. So I just feel like... And that's the stuff that people kind of go back and watch and everything. And I've had, you know, it's it's a lot more difficult these days because they're so busy to get people that are currently on WWE on NXT to come on my show. But yeah. I've had, you know, I'm like currently in WWE, I've had to go Tyler Breeze. I've had Rusev on, but Rusev was talking about a movie that he did with CJ Perry that they right. produced. So yeah. I did that. But like, I remember like uh, I had like Dijakovic on when he was Donovan Dijak on Ring of Honor. You know what I mean? Yep. Or I've had, and it's really cool to see that kind of, it's cool to see them grow. Is that kind of one of your favorite things about doing the interviews you've done? You look at the interview you've done like three or four years ago of a wrestler and seeing him kind of, seeing him or her grow, like the growth of them after you've done an interview, that's pretty oh, cool. Oh, absolutely. Not just their growth, but like our growth as well. Like I, I just, uh, I'm uploading an interview with Sammy Callahan this week. So for everyone asking who my next interview is, it's Sammy Callahan this Thursday. It's an interview we actually did a month ago but he was talking about his new character. It hadn't debuted yet on TV. But uh, there's, a, there's a great interview example because I went back and watched the old interview we did from two and a half years ago. And I'm like, oh, both of us have like changed and come so far. But it's cool. Like I did an interview with Austin Theory when he was just an independent guy. And now Austin Theory is not just in NXT. Austin Theory is going to be at WrestleMania. They're so short staffed with people that are willing to be able to take the risk and work the show that Austin Theory, who's been with WWE for less than a year, not even on the main roster, is going to be part of WrestleMania. So, like, stuff like that just gets me so jacked up. That, yeah, that's an interesting, that's an interesting one. And they, they made, they obviously made, uh, they made WrestleMania like a two day event as well, which has never been done before. Right. Well, good. It, it should be because I've been to uh, the last seven or eight WrestleManias, been to nine WrestleManias in total. And every time I leave there, I go, that was fun, but it was a long day. So if they're going to take an eight or nine hour show and now make it a two four hour shows or two three hour shows, sign me up for that. So a cool thing I want to kind of talk to you about is for a little bit, you, you kind of you were you were involved in working with AEW for a little bit. Yeah, so I was asked to be part of the first show, um, October 2nd, the first show live on Dynamite in Washington, D.C. And that was all I was asked to be part of. And it yeah, because such... that's what I wanted to ask you, because then that kind of like, and like Tyler Breeze and I kind of talked about you a little bit, because I brought up your amazing interview with him, um, because I really love that interview, and I love Oh, thank it, you. It was I, a I good one. Um, but like, 
Yeah, he kind of said like, yeah, like it seems like yeah, Van Vliet did you know AW and then didn't do AW anymore. But I'm pretty sure like because I saw some comments on like people were saying like where's Chris Van Vliet and stuff like that. The people are, were asking like a, about AW like where you went basically. So it was just yeah. supposed to be like a one time thing. Yeah, I was asked to be part of the first show and I uh, I said, well, do you guys want me there every week? And they said. Well, right now we want you there for the first show, and we'll kind of see how things go. But, I mean, okay. if you look at their broadcast roster, it's yeah. stacked. They don't have any room for anybody else. So, well, well, I had – so I had before, like, the live shows kind of went out, I got to do an interview with, you know, Sammy Guevara, mm -hmm. and I got to do an interview with Darby Allen. Mm -hmm. And Darby Allen's interview was pretty crazy. Like, he literally was – I was like, why did you decide to go to AW? And he could have just straight up was just like – yeah, like, I want to go because I, I, I knew Cody and I wanted to do cool things. And he was like, well, I went to AEW because settle, uh, going to NXT would be settling for less. And I'm like, man, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like Darby, yeah. like, let's go. Come on, I'm not talking about that stuff. <laughs> so, you know, I was really fortunate, though, with AEW to work that first show. And then I worked uh, the fifth episode as well in Charleston, West Virginia. I was on one of the Road 2 episodes. I was hosting from the Control Center. So cool to be part of that. And it's cool that I was able to, like, been able to do some interviews, like actual interviews, and then I've been able to do some interviews as part of the show. Man, it's been cool because I grew up as a massive wrestling fan, yeah, like a too. huge wrestling fan. So to be part of, you know, the few shows that I've been a part of has been like a real dream come true. And I'm so excited about what AEW has been doing every single Wednesday night. Uh, they've changed the game. 2019 is going to be a time when we look back at wrestling and go, Oh, man, wrestling's completely different because of what happened that year. The only question I want to get into in terms of kind of opinions and what you think of certain things, because I, I try to tend to kind of, like, stay away from not – and what I'm about to ask you is not, like – it's not controversial, but, like, people got different opinions on it. It's just – I remember when AEW first launched, they were talking about how huge their roster was. They had a really yeah. big roster. Um, and they – Cody Rhodes even said, like, you've only seen, like, 25% of the roster, so to speak. And I think they're taking their time and they're trying to um, get like get out there. But do you do you think that there's more opportunity for them right like right now, especially when they're going head to head with NXT to kind of get some more talent in there, or or, or do they just not want to rush and they kind of want to see what they have now? What do you think about all that? I don't know if there's room to be honest. Yeah. I mean, the the roster is pretty stacked, and they you know they keep adding some great new talent like they just did with Brody Lee. And Matt Hardy. So I don't know if there's room to bring in more people with just two hours of TV time. Of course, you've got AEW Dark, and that's been a great spot for some of the mid-card to undercard guys to shine, and also some local talent to shine in the in, in uh, each um, different city. So, sure, it'd be great to bring in more people. I just think that it would be a disservice to the people that are currently on the roster yeah. Because I don't know who's, you know, how there's going to be time for everybody. Yeah. So I want to know right now, I'm talking right now, who is your, and then I'll give you my three. Who's your favorite WWE superstar right now? Your favorite NXT superstar and your favorite AEW superstar right now? All right. So WWE, uh, look, I've always been such a big Dolph Ziggler guy and I never thought that he got a fair shake. So I think that Dolph will forever be my favorite until, until he's not there anymore. Um, but Seth Rollins, I think, is doing some great stuff. So Seth, Seth Rollins is oh, – that'll be the real answer, okay? Seth okay. Rollins will be the yeah. real answer. NXT, Keith Lee is, has blown me away since he debuted. And for a guy that big to be that athletic is unbelievable. It's just been so incredible to watch. And AEW, it's, it's tough because there's so many great talent there from top to bottom. But someone who, when their music hits or I see their match on the card – I get excited when Darby Allen has a match because Darby Allen is something so special. And I think we forget how young he is. Like he's like 22 years old. So we're going to be talking about Darby Allen for another 10 or 15 or maybe more years. And he's just going to keep getting better and better all the time. For sure. I'll give you my three and then I'm going to give you some honorable mentions because I think there's so many good wrestlers right now. And like I said, you had a hard time kind of giving me your three. Sure. Um, but, like, right now, so um, in WWE, I have to say my guy right now, and he's more kind of used for, like, comic relief right now, but I think he's just an unbelievable um, superstar, is 
Otis from Heavy Machinery. Oh, yeah. He's my guy. I love that guy so much. Like, and I love that Otis has taken this gimmick and just completely run with it. Now, he could have taken this gimmick and it, and it could have flopped on him. But and he's taken anyone, this gimmick and made it work. And if anyone needs some more songs to rock out to when you're going to the gym, just saying Heavy Machinery's theme song, yes. pretty good. It's a pretty yes. good one. I have to say, even though it's instrumental, NXT, I'm an, I've always been an Adam Cole guy. Adam Cole, I think, is a superstar. I think that guy Boom. is – he's a superstar, right, Chris? Like, he's a superstar. He is. He has – and what an amazing look he has. I know he does, right? Yeah. And then AEW, i got to go with Darby Allen. That's actually, like, my favorite. But to kind of go – not to go with your answer, I will say I'm a, I'm a big Sammy Guevara guy. The well, Spanish Sammy guy. would be my next pick. And, you know, Sammy's, uh, you know, become someone that I've talked with – you know, frequently. I'm just so excited about what he's doing, not just in the ring, but Sammy Guevara's YouTube channel is quickly becoming one of my favorite YouTube channels. And if you're watching this right now and you don't subscribe to Sammy, he's so close to hitting 100,000 subscribers. He's probably going to hit in the next week or two. And then from there, he's just going to hockey stick all the way up. There's so many good guys right now. Like, you know, I, I'm a big, I was, I was telling, you know, um, Tyler Breeze, like I love Angel Garza. I think he's doing a lot of good stuff right now. Um, Someone said Orange Cassidy. I love Orange Cassidy. Hilarious stuff. In New Zealand. Oh, my God. What time is it in New Zealand? You must be uh, it's just waking up there. Ricochet is a good one. I'm just looking at all the comments. Oh, Ricochet is so supremely talented and has not been given a chance to show off. You, you've, interviewed, you've interviewed Darby, eh? You've, yes. Actually, yeah. you did an interview. We did. I guess he was doing, a, like, press that week because – he did that interview with you. Like, I did my interview of him about three or four days after, like, like after yours. Oh, so I did the interview at Fight for the Fallen in Jacksonville. And I worked indie shows with Darby. And I, I was actually the ring announcer for him at Blueprint Pro Wrestling in Deerfield Beach. And I basically just said, hey, man, well, we worked together before. Want to do an interview? And he's like, sure. And that was the end of it. <laughs> That's literally, like, he, he literally said that to me, too. Like, he literally was like, well, sure, let's do it. And he did an interview yeah. with me. Um, something interesting, I just, I just um, someone, because someone was talking about Cedric Alexander. Oh. And I, I, I love Cedric Alexander. But he, it's kind of cool, too, because, you know, he is someone that's kind of, you know, he's married to Big Swall from AEW. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't realize that. Same thing with Adam Cole and Britt Baker. That WWE, AEW, yeah, Sean Spears, all, and, yeah. yeah, Peyton Royce. So what do you, like? So when people see that, I think it's kind of funny because people are gonna say kind of like, oh, like the WWE versus AEW type thing. But like in their household, like there can't be a versus. Like they gotta support each other. Well, I, well, I think in their household, it's it's just a paycheck. It's a job. I don't. I think it's just like you go to work. Uh, at your place on a Wednesday, and I go to work at my place on a Monday or Friday or Wednesday or wherever, you know, whichever roster yeah, yeah. they happen to be with, with WWE. Yeah, I really hope Brian K. Okay, so here's the thing, and I want your opinion on this right now. Sure. So I have a couple of interviews that I've done a long time ago with wrestlers, okay, that I just haven't been able to get out, right? Like, I did one with the MJF before AEW. It's a great nice. interview. It's hilarious. Yes. But, it, <laughs> but, like... And I did one with Brian Cage, but for all the like all the AW rumors. Yeah, they, I've done them a while ago. Should I still put them out? Sure, why not? Okay, do Especially I should I put MJF like one. people people cannot get enough? But am MJF I okay? Stuff. Like, is it okay? Like, well, he won't get mad if I post it, right? Why not? So I'm just, says, I'm just wondering because it's not it's not who'd you ever beat? Someone asked me what the T-shirt was. There we go. <laughs> No, because you know what I mean? Like, it was before AEW, you know what I mean? Like, he was still in, like, the indies. Is, but is he in that character? Yeah. Yeah, then absolutely. There's not a day that goes by, man, where people don't ask me about the MJF interview that I did. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post it. But the Brian Cage one, too, because he was with Impact at the time. I don't know. Maybe I'll just do, like, Lost episode exclusive or something. Yeah, or maybe, know. like, a, do it as a throwback. Why not? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, you, you, you're pumping me up for this because the, the MJF, MJF one is actually one. hilarious. It's People actually hilarious. cannot get enough of MJF, so I think that if you post that MJF one, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Because he, it's so funny. Because I was like, <laughs> I would just, it's it's audio like he was driving, right? So I was like, "Welcome to the show, man." And he's like, 
you know what? I don't feel welcome because that was the worst introduction I've ever heard in my life. And you're from Canada, and I don't like you. <laughs> yeah, like, well, there you go. Right, well, we're doing this. <laughs> yeah, well, at least you didn't have him shoving an omelet in your face. That was a group. That was, but that you know what? That will. That's like a, my top. One of my top five favorite Chris Van Fleet interviews of all time, man. Yeah, no, it's. I enjoyed. I that. also yeah. love the one you did with Van Piro because he doesn't care. Oh yeah. Like Van I Piro, love that he just yeah. he just doesn't care. Yeah, Van Piro does not care at all. And the thing is, like, if he pisses people off, he's just like, who cares? He really, I am. know. Like he doesn't. He doesn't care. Like, there are some people that care. Like, even guys that are known for kind of talking a little bit of smack. Like, they they have their guard up. They, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, when, when I talk to Rob Van Dam, you know, he has his opinions on certain things and not being used properly in WWE. You know what I mean? And I had I had Rob Van Dam on my show after he showed up for the Raw reunion there. And he was talking about how they had a plan. He wanted to do the frog splash, but then they pulled it right away. And he was kind of oh. like, I was kind of bummed a little, but he could have totally ripped it, right? He's not on contract with WWE. But he didn't, you know what I mean? Well, I think that uh, Rob Van Dam wants to be in the Hall of Fame one day. So I, I think that... He should guys, be, right? Do you agree? He should be a Hall of Fame. Of course he... I mean, there's no, there's no question. He'll be in the Hall of Fame. And he actually told me that he wants Paul Heyman to induct him. And I think that that's exactly how it's going to go. But I think that there's a lot of people that unfortunately leave WWE and they go on the shoot interview tour and they kind of put their foot in their mouth. Like, at the time, they, they believe it, and that's how they feel. And then a year or two or five later, they go, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have said those things. Yeah, for sure. And I know, so I did an interview. It was a Skype interview, and it was when he was inducted to the Hall of Fame. When I did it with Jeff Jarrett, it was a very, like, very meaty. And then that's fine, you know what I mean? But it was a very, like, not, I wouldn't say generic answers, but, like, it was very positive. He didn't, like, want it. Like, I had some thorough kind of questions and he was like you know i don't want to go into that i want to talk about the hall of fame you know what i mean and it's but then i did one with you know ken shamrock who you you've interviewed before and i love that interview so i feel like you've interviewed like everyone in wrestling is that I possible wish. did you get did you go you know what you need to do you need to open up like wwe 2k you should do this this would be really cool i have an idea for you for your okay, channel let's right hear it. you're gonna go you're gonna put your camera on um, WWE 2K whatever and yeah. do one where they have all the legend and you're going to go through the roster and everyone you're going to go to you're going to be like oh I interviewed him I haven't interviewed her yet but I want to and you're going to go through each one and you're going to say a funny story about it oh I loved interviewing this person that's, that's a good idea there's so many that I haven't interviewed um, but there's a is... lot that you have and I guarantee you if you True. look at that list you're going to be able to go through it yeah, no, and there's still some like at the top of the list that I want to do. I'm You've interviewed John him. Cena, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I've interviewed Cena three times. Um, I've been so fortunate. He's so kind and so giving. And a lot of what Cena said during the interview that we had actually rings true with me like every single day. Like, control the controllable, especially in the situation that we're in right now. Like, control the controllable. Way too many people are focusing on stuff that they have zero control over. So that's a big thing that John Cena said. But like you mentioned Cedric Alexander before, and yep. Cena talked about like taking the storyline that you've got. These are Cena's words and not mine. Taking the shit that they give you, knowing that it's shit, but making it good. And I think there's a lot of guys in WWE especially who are given a storyline or given a character and then just don't do anything with it. And Cena was given a pretty terrible character. If, if you watch the Ruthless Aggression uh, docuseries, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And he came out with that rapping character and it completely changed his career. It saved his career and it made him the guy that he is now. For sure. The, the FCW documentary, did you watch that yet? I haven't watched it yet. There's some good stuff on it. All right, that'll be tonight after Raw. It shows, like, so some of who you've interviewed, like Alex Riley, he was so good at, with promos. So good. Mm -hmm. oh. So good at promos. Well, Alex Riley, you know, as soon as this all ends, Alex Riley will be back in the ring. Oh, yeah. I, I don't I know when or where. I don't know if you saw the post picture that he posted on uh, Twitter about a month ago. He was backstage at Impact, just kind of, you know, getting back into things. Mm-hmm. It's funny because I'm from Ottawa, so we had Bound for Glory here a couple of times um, in, in, in Ottawa. And I know I remember I did an interview with um, uh, Alberto El Patron. Um, yeah. And you've interviewed him before. 
Yeah, I've interviewed him a few times. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Alberto Del Rio. I am, but you know what? What Del Rio, what he did in WWE, like he was, he did, like he was great, man. Like I loved his characters in that. Oh, look, and he was so over as well. And one of my favorite moments in WWE, it involves him, although it wasn't him coming out on top, was when Dolph Ziggler cashed in on him. And the way that uh, uh, Del Rio sold that and the way, like it made the moment so special. And I think that Del Rio in the ring is so talented. I know he gets a lot of hate and he gets a lot of flack, but I think that he's super talented. No, absolutely. What are you kind of looking forward to in terms of, you're doing a lot of kind of remote interviews, obviously. I think we all have to right now. <laughs> we have no yeah, choice. Yeah. Um, you've been doing those YouTube um, like Q&As. Can you talk a little bit about those? So last week I was like, look, if we can't do interviews in person, which is my favorite thing to do, to be able to shake someone's hand, look them in the eye, and you know, just feed off of their energy. If we can't do that, let's like do something where it can be interactive and everybody can join in. So I was doing these live hour long Q and A's on my YouTube channel and asking only the questions that we got here from the, uh, uh, the chat, which is kind of what we're doing here right now, which is Absolutely. so fun. Someone's but asked me, ha is, like, no, I have not, I have not interviewed Bret Hart. Have you interviewed Bret Hart? I have not, I've not interviewed Bret Hart. And that's someone I'd love to do an interview with. Yeah. So I, I, I was doing the Q&As. I did one every single day last week. This week, I'm going to do a, a taped virtual interview with Matt Taven from Ring of Honor, which I'm super excited He's, about. I've, I've, I've interviewed him. Great, great. He's a great guy. He And he was kind of one of those examples about, like, not being afraid to kind of say things. He was like, man, he's like, Ring of Honor is bumping right now. I don't want to go anywhere else. Yeah. But, and, that, and that's always so interesting when you hear guys that are – you know, in Impact, or they're in uh, MLW, or they're in AEW, and they have a reason why they're there and why they enjoy being there. Okay, I, I'm pumped now. I'm probably gonna go. I'm gonna probably go check out that MJF interview afterwards and yes, see what do I could do. No, because it was a while ago. It was before AEW. Oh, I, I think you should still put it up. People are gonna yeah. love this. Uh, what happened? Someone's asking what happened to the Cultaholic interview. Uh, so Tom interviewed me, and it's gonna be up on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Well, this is, I still have to get you on like my pre-recorded show. Let's do it. We're going to do it. We'll, we'll do it soon. Cause this is like, this is cool. And I'm going to, I found a, um, a way to actually like download the IG lives. Oh, that's which, awesome. Which Perfect. is awesome. Yeah. You should do more of those IG lives. I'll send you what I use to save them. Cause like they're easy, man. I'm sure wrestlers would doubt be doing them as well. Yeah, no, uh, look, we're all figuring this out as we go, right? Yeah. And, you know, the, the famous phrase is uh, necessity is the mother invention. I, I would never have done a Skype interview, Zoom interview, whatever, you, you know, you want to call it, if it wasn't for what was going on in the world. So, you know, necessity is the mother invention. I'm glad we're able to do this. I look forward to not having to just rely on this. But, yeah, you know, like if, the, if this quarantine had happened 15 years ago, what would we do? We'd have, we'd have no smartphones. We'd have no Netflix. we I don't know what we'd be doing other than, you know, playing uh, Monopoly or something. I don't know what we would do ever. I'm really happy you were able to do this with me, man. Thank you so much. No, me too. Thanks so much, man. This was great. And uh, let's do it again sometime. No, absolutely. Plug away, man. YouTube, Chris Van Vliet, plug away. Well, it's my name, at Chris Van Vliet, which you see on the screen there right now. And if, if any of Pete's followers are watching this and not subscribed to me or not uh, following me, please. I do it right now. If you're a wrestling fan, I think you'll appreciate the videos. And any of Chris's followers that are not following me, vice versa as well. YouTube.com slash pop alternatives. I don't just interview I don't just interview wrestlers. Like I just did an IG live with uh, Miltos Yoramalu from Game of Thrones. That was pretty cool. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. So I was doing that. But man, I'm so we've been trying to do something for a while, Chris, and I'm really happy you were, we were able to do this, man. I really appreciate it. I'm a big fan of your work, man. So this is really well, cool. Well, likewise. And all it took was a global pandemic to bring us together. <laughs> <laughs> much. And uh, we'll talk soon, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, for commenting. We appreciate you. Yes, thank you. Thanks, everyone. And yes, I will do an interview with Raven, Ozzy. That's coming up soon. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Really appreciate it, man. All right. See you, guys.